I'm someone who tries to do too many things at the same time. That's, I think that sums me up really well. I do a lot of things and I don't always get them done because I'm trying to do other things at the same time as well. Like for paint, if I'm starting a painting, I'll start about three. So it will take me ages to finish any of them because I'm always doing too, th too many things. So yeah, painting, I've got a family, a full-time job, a house I'm renovating, trying to go skateboarding every day. Too much, that's what I do, too, I, I do too much. It was only a, a couple of years ago I started painting figures a lot more. And um, I think sort of subconsciously I started painting people in quite cramped and uncomfortable positions. It's the sort of thing I see at work quite a lot. Obviously, I, you know, in my job, you see people that are most vulnerable. Um, and I didn't realise I was doing it. I just I was sketching a lot and it just came to, kept being the same figures in sort of cramped positions. And then I started having sort of getting hold of weird shaped bits of wood, off cuts of wood, triangles. And then I, I found I was really forcing people into these positions on the piece, on the uh, like the paintings into the into the shape of the uh, the wood I paint on. Um, so I didn't think it had influenced it until I realised that I was just painting people uncomfortable all the time. And then something that goes along with that, I was also a carer for my mum since I was a young boy, um, and I worked in sort of care homes and that sort of side of things. So I realised I was painting people either really cramped or people being carried or sort of hugged. So I think that's influenced my work as much as the sort of firefighting, either lifting people up, helping people, or people pretty uncomfortable. See, I didn't realise it had, but it obviously, I think a psychologist would you know, make easy work of it, really. I've always painted, um, I always like things really flat, really flat colour. And I used to use a lot of spray paint, and then a lot of sort of acrylic, and I found, to get it really flat, I wanted no texture at all. and. You just couldn't do it on paper because you get it so direct, the paper would always curl up. So then I started working on card, and as, as much as I wanted to put loads on, and whatever I used would always end up soaking up too much paint. So then it was just like a natural progression to go from paper to thick paper to card, and then onto wood, because you can just put loads on, and it doesn't saturate it. So I just wanted, basically I wanted it to look like it was screen painted, but painted. So. Uh, yeah, just, just sort of a natural, I couldn't get the finish I wanted on paper or, I mean, canvas, I didn't know how to, or I never went, I sort of got into art college years ago, but I never went because I ended up becoming a carer for my mum. So I never learned the things I should have learned in terms of like how to, you know, stretch a canvas and all that. And they didn't make the sizes or the shapes I wanted, but I could get a bit of wood and cut it to the shape I wanted and, and it could take as much paint as I put on it. I think sort of artistically, the biggest inspiration for me, when I was, I did A-level art, so what's that, sort of 16, 17 years old? Or no, younger than that, I think it was about 15. We went on a school trip to the Royal Academy and it was 20th century artists, so Andy Warhol, Lichtenstein, Keith Haring, all, and it was the first time I'd seen art that was flat, like I said, the colour was flat, it was, it was screen printed, a lot of it, or like Roy Lichtenstein, where it's just a totally flat colour, no texture to it. and. I loved it. That was, you know, for me, that was the biggest inspiration. And when I started painting, I wanted that to be totally flat. I wanted, no, I didn't, first of all, I didn't have the patience to make something look realistic. So my people became really, I wanted them to be not cartoony, but I wanted them to be really unrealistic. Because I haven't got the time to spend hours to make it look like skin or make it look like texture or depth. I wanted it to be, I like painting really fast. So I wanted it flat. So as much as I sort of really, I loved seeing those things, I thought, wow, you haven't got to be like a, you know, like classical art where it's really, you've got the depth to it. I wanted it to be flat and the people look almost 2D. There's no sort of contours to them. And yeah, seeing that and realizing you could do things really big and really flat, cartoony, you know, like Warhol or Lichtenstein, where it's just looked like it's printed. That for me, I, I couldn't believe that you could do it. I hadn't seen it before. We didn't, you know, back in the olden days before there was the internet, I didn't, I didn't have art books, but the teacher took us there, and I, yeah, I was like, that's exactly how I want to paint, as if it's screen printed. Although it's quite often, I do sort of two things. I either do people who are 
sort of quite cramped and uncomfortable or people being helped and the sort of feedback when I sell paintings the people who buy gym I do a lot of hands like hands coming out and lifting people up and I sold one a really a big a really big piece to a lady who was a nurse and she was sort of talking she was messaging me a lot about it and sort of after covid and she's you know i think it was entitled um we're all here we're all here to help it was just loads of hands coming in to there's nothing to pick up but it's, it's just hands coming in to help and she loved it and she so she bought it and said it really sort of reminded her of that time where she was part of that thing she was a nurse during covid and it was you know the sort of i guess the camaraderie of what she sort of went through at hospital um so I really like that that people sort of pick up on the, the the sort of you know the people hugging or the people being lifted people take a lot i think um the feedback i've had people were sort of reassured by that and on the other side the people who are who are painted who are cramped and uncomfortable i never mean it to be i don't want it to be an uncomfortable painting i don't want it to be sort of challenging to look at it's not meant to be uncomfortable as in for the person looking at it I think I don't I don't ever intend that um, so I don't know what they get from those sort of the, the more uncomfortable paintings I don't know but I, I, the people seem to like the ones with the hands and the, and the lifting and the the more sort of yeah the hugging do a lot of people sort of either interlinked and hugging or but yeah hopefully they find that uplifting so I'm doing a load for the holy art fair because a lot of the paintings I did they kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then they were coming sort of a couple of meters by a couple of meters which i love painting but it's really problematic it's hard to sell it's a, in terms of it's hard to ship to people because i sell a lot i sell a lot of paintings to america so they're trying to get it ups to america i think i lose about one in five paintings to go missing because they're on wood you've got to, it's hard so i've started to make things a bit smaller so i've got a load of i've bought I've got sheets and sheets of wood that are cut to one size for sort of smaller paintings, that sort of size, that are a lot more portable. So yeah, I'm loving that now. I've got a load of all the same size and it sort of feels like I'm doing a sort of a production on a different people. And yeah, it's really nice.